What's up everybody, my name is the Holy Apple and welcome to a new video. So if you are like me, then you probably don't want to go through countless videos trying to figure out what's new in Season 17. However, I am here today to change all that because I'm going to go through everything that is new in Season of the Haunted. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to go through the new weapons and as you can see, there's two different variations of weapons that we got this season. One set of weapons is from Season of Opulence, which is a reprise set with new perk rolls, so I will go through them first. The long-awaited Ostringer making a return which is 140 RPM hand cannon with a 30 man mag. We also have another version of Durang, which does pair with Sturm, and this is the Baroque version. So basically think of the original Durang, but a bit blinged up. Another returning weapon is a 900 RPM submachine gun called the Callus Mini Tool, which can be used like the Mida Multi Tool and does also pair with the Mida Multi Tool. There's also a returning fusion rifle called the Epicurean, which is 780 charge time with 6 a mag. And finally, there is the Beloved, which has been very anticipated by the Destiny community. From what I've been hearing, it was basically the most loved sniper when it came around to being the primary in the PvP. Going into new weapons, however, we have a bit of a mix up. So, to start with, we have Hollow Denial, which is a new trace rifle. And this is a Void Trace Rifle, so now we have Void and Solar. There is Tears of Contrition, which is a 180 RPM Scout Rifle with a 16 round magazine. Accompanying that, we have a new Glaive, which is called Nezarat's Whisper, and it does look pretty cool in my opinion. There is a new Rocket Launcher called Bump in the Night, which just looks enormous. There is also a new Machine Gun called Fixed Odds, which does look quite interesting. I quite like how this looks. A sneaky auto rifle that didn't appear on my collections. There is also the Fire Fright, which is an auto rifle that is new this season. Is on the season pass if you're interested. And now for the guns with a bit of a question mark on them. So we have the Statico 46, which is a new scout rifle that dropped. And we have a new SMG called the Hero's Burden, which appears to be an Iron Banner SMG. So it'll be interesting to get this when Iron Banner comes around. Trials has its new sidearm called the Forgiveness, which will be good to get if you are obsessed with Trials. And again, with some more question marks, we have the Luna Looter 4B, which is a new bow this season. This is quite interesting to see because this is a stasis bow, which I don't believe there is any others in the game at this point. And there's also a new bow called Stride and Whistle as well. Sitting in Gambit, there is a new shotgun called Dead Weight. So if you're obsessed with Gambit, this will be a good addition for you. Again, if you're obsessed with Trials, there is also a new fusion rifle called Burden of Guilt, which is a stasis fusion rifle. Back to Iron Banner, there is also a fusion rifle called the Wise and Rebuke. It is worth noting that this has a very high impact looking at it. I will be curious as to get in one of these. And just in case you didn't get the Azumi RR4 in the last season, then you have the chance to get the Gallo RR3, which is the new sniper. Quote unquote new, it looks like a rehash of the Azumi, if I'm going to be honest. Again, with the question marks, we have Enyo D, which is a submachine gun, 600 RPM. I'm going to be honest, there's a lot of 900 RPMs floating around at the minute, so it might not be interesting to get, but it is down to your preference. We have the new exotic sidearm, of course, called the Trespasser. Which, if you haven't used it already, it's kind of like a three burst weapon, but when you get a kill with it, it overcharges and then does a longer burst. Typically around five to six shots, I think. Also, this season, if you're interested in getting Nightfall weapons, the Horrors Least has apparently come back and it is also sporting an adept version, which is very bizarre for me. But I'm used to having a Horrors Least that is zero light, so eh, what do I know? Also for the Nightfall weapons, we appear to have a new hand cannon called the DFA, and I'm going to be honest, this looks actually terrifying because of how much impact it has. So PvP meta might be very heavily swinging back to the 140 RPM hand cannons and sniper rifle meta, so it's going to be a bit scary going forward. And finally, we have the seasonal machine gun chain of command. This can be unlocked from any activity, so by all means start grinding and get your first reset to get one of these. And in the comment section, before you start going off how I've missed out all the dungeon weapons, don't worry, I will be going over them later on. One set of season armor that is on the season pass is the Idolan... Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm just going to call these the Idolan handguards because that is way too much to say. As far as equipping these go, I wouldn't actually equip these because I have other preferences for armor. But if you're interested, by all means go for it. The one I am interested in, however, is the... <laughs> Jesus, what is with these names? The EPLS Following Grasps. That is a mouthful. What is with the long name, Bungie? This is the Universal Hunter set that I'm looking at, which while looking awesome in itself, it also comes with a skull mask, which is the first of its type, and I am very interested to get it. And of course, if you fancy spending some silver, there is the Sun's Apex set as well, which is looking very fine. Another armor set I almost completely forgot about is the new Trials armor that has come out. So obviously, again, if you're obsessed with Trials, you can grind away for this new set of armor. Moving away from the collections, we also go over to the seals. So the new seals we have this season is Haunted, which is quite a bit of a grind, if I'm going to be honest, but what it looks like. But it's not going to be anything difficult to get. I am quite happy with the title name Reaper, though. It is definitely unique when it comes to the titles previous. 
accompanying Iron Banner this season. We also have the new Iron Lord that's going to come out. And obviously, if you're obsessed enough with completing the dungeon multiple times over, there is the duality seal as well. Which, I'm going to be honest, I'll give it a crack to try and get these, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Because these are quite literally the same as a raid. And what I mean by that is you have solar fire team completion, void fire team completion, arc fire team completion. There are very similar parallels when it comes to drawing differences between this and a raid. But enough of the collections, let's go see what is actually new. So if you go to the moon, over in the bottom left we have the Castilium, which is the Leviathan. And you'll basically be able to explore this like a free roam area. One of the main things you're going to be doing in the Castilium is fighting the nightmares that come on the public event. The reason for this is because there are many tribes associated with it, and it is the main activity for the event. And you can also get a very flashy scythe as well when you're running it. So the way that this public event actually works is it will go through to tier 1 to tier 3. Tier 1 and 2 are basically just killing random nightmares as you go. Ideally with a fire team or at least a good sized team around you. And eventually when you kill all these nightmares you get a big nightmare that spawns. And this guy's got to be killed to progress into the next tier. Also don't forget every time that you kill one of these bosses if you head over back to the scepter. Then heavy ammo will also spawn which does reveal your special as well. There is a mode that you can select before you go to the Castellium to actually put you in a public event or one that is already active, so it does cut out the queue waiting time, which is a really smart move from Bungie. When you finally get to the Tier 3 Nightmare, you can see it'll have three phases. So this isn't really that important when it comes to Mechanic Boss, because there should be enough for you just to melt him. But either way, watch out for the Screebs, because these will easily kill you. Much like in the previous tiers, when these little black crystal things appear, just shoot them to destroy them, and then it will move into the next stage. Obviously in this case you've got to move on to the Abominations before you can touch the boss, but after you've done that, the boss is then released for DPS once again. And when you finally destroy it, then you can head over to the Harvester. You can deposit 500 Vestiges of Dread for rewards, which can normally be an Ascendant Alloy. I am not that lucky this time around though. You can also get an Opulent Key, which I'll move on to in a minute, from the chest. Make sure when you've done this public event, you go around the, the Stalem, because there is actually hidden chests that you can get to, which are activated by pulling these switches. I would highly advise putting a chest locator on your ghost, because it will make these a lot easier to find, but normally you can probably just follow the other players, they have probably found these chests already. As you can see with the chest locator on, you can see the chest through the wall up there, which of course when we jump up here, the chest is already open, so we can just collect it and move on our way. It's also worth noting that it appears that there is going to be multiple bosses for this public event, so it is likely going to change when we get to next week's reset. But now going back to the Leviathan itself. So, when we're going through the Leviathan, there are three areas that it separates into. We have the Lasalum, which we just had the public event in. I'm not sure if that's going to rotate in the new weeks, but we'll find out. We have the Pleasure Gardens, which quite a few players will recognise from the old Season of Opulence. But in this, there will be nightmares spawning all over the place, including some special nightmares if you are hunting for the Triumphs. But that is a complete preference down to you. Overall, this is quite a nice addition. You probably recognise this area actually from when you did your tutorial mission, but ultimately, it is just another area to explore. The third and final area in the Leviathan is the Royal Pools, and this is a fairly new area to me, so wandering around again, you can just explore. There are nightmares all the way around the place, as well as its own tribes to try and get while killing these nightmares. As you could expect, most of the seasonals are tied to the Derelict Leviathan, so you'll have to go there to complete all of these. So, like I previously mentioned, I have an opulent key, which I got from the chest from the public event. So I'm just going to go quickly find this chest to give you an idea of what you need to do. So, the clue is the Royal Pools at the Fear of Greatness. So, we head over to the area called the Royal Pools, which is on the left. It did fade very quickly. And Fear of Greatness, I can only assume, is referencing Callus, and that looks like a Callus statue. And here we are, opulent key on this golden chest here, and we get a reward. I have the Ostringer this time. There are obviously multiple chests in each area that you need to go to when you have the opulent keys, but they will always give you a clue as to which one you need to open. And also even when you walk up to the chest themselves, it will tell you if it is the right chest or not. Probably one of the most important updates in Season of the Haunted is Solo 3.0, which is going to bring it more in line to the stasis and void builds we previously had, so we have a bunch of new fragments and aspects to play around with. This obviously means we have all the grenades locked now as well, so any class can use any grenade. I won't be going over the aspects and fragments too much because there are going to be plenty of other videos going over Solo 3.0 and what you can actually do with it. But my advice for it would just be to play around with it and find out what works for you. Heading over to the helm, it is now in space as you can see. And again, this is explained on the tutorial mission, but you can see in the far distance we have the Leviathan out on the view now, which is quite cool. And if you go into the room on the left side, you will also have the Crown of Sorrow sitting here. So you'll be coming here for all of your missions every week and also bounties as well. 
As a little side note, these callous little bobbleheads are hidden around the Leviathan. Just go up to the notes that you can see, like here, for example, and it will give you a rough idea of where they are. Obviously, you can look up a guide if you are stuck with these. In addition to all of the Leviathan and weapons so far, there is also a new quest called Sever. And this is part of the main story, so I'm not going to play through it and show it off to you. Just play through it and experience it yourself. I guarantee you'll enjoy it if you are liking the story content. And last but by no means least, we have the Duality Dungeon, which came out this Friday. This is tough, I'm not going to lie. We went through with a fire team of anywhere between 15, 16, 15, 70, and it took us four and a half hours to beat. So use that as a scale for trying to beat this. Obviously, when we get to like 15, 80 and higher light level, this might be quite a bit easier to complete. But until then, it is still fairly tough. And again, I'm not going to be going over the mechanics of the dungeon. I might do that in a separate video, but that remains to be seen. But for those who haven't played it yet, by all means, give it a go and see how you feel. The final boss surprised me by quite a bit. Not to mention, it was cruelly difficult, so fair play to Bungie. But before that dungeon, there is a new set of armor that you can get, and this is called the Deep Explorer Suit. So, I'm going to be completely honest, this armor doesn't look good to me. If you want to have a look for yourself, by all means, there's going to be a screenshot on screen now of what they all look like as full sets. I personally am not a fan of this armor set, but that is just my opinion. I've never been a massive fan of the space looking kind of armor sets. And also accompanying this, the seasonal armor is actually far better and far more appealing to me. Because it's not every day that we get a skull uniform to use for Hunter, so I'm looking forward to that. Weapon wise, however, it is a very different story. So starting off with the dungeon weapons, we have the Unforgiven Submachine Gun. And these look incredible. Not to mention, I do like the new perk Bitter Spite, so basically... The more damage you take, the faster your reload is going to be. This is a very interesting trait to have, considering the fact that if you have an SMG and you've taken a lot of damage, you should reload like lightning. And when you have something like PvP with the pulse, which I'm going to go over in a minute, then it can be quite a big game changer as well. Not to mention, I've just read another perk for these new weapons called Repulsor Brace, and defeating a void debuff's target grants an overshield. So you have an SMG that grants an overshield. As I just mentioned, we have a pulse rifle called New Purpose, which looks absolutely amazing yet again. And this is going to be the interesting one because it's a 340 RPM pulse. Sits in the primary slot like the piece of mine did. Obviously, it shoots slower. But the interesting thing that's going to be with this is that it has the Bitter Spite perk, which means the more damage you take, the quicker your reload is going to be. So I'm very interested to see what kind of perks could roll with this weapon to make it a PvP god roll, but we'll wait and see. For the grenade launchers, we have a grenade launcher called the Lingering Dead, which again looks absolutely amazing as a grenade launcher. It does appear to be a one-shot grenade, it's not a waveform unfortunately, but it is a primary slot grenade launcher, which is interesting. I'm not sure if this rolls with blinding grenades, but if it does, I'm definitely going to be getting one of these. Or maybe even a couple, might even go for a damage one. For linear fusion rifles, we have the Storm Chaser, which I have seen, it looks amazing. And it is a three round burst linear fusion rifle, something that's quite new. Not to mention it looks like it's got a very fast charge time as well. I don't think the impact will be as high as, let's say, the Corsair's Wrath. But the fact that it's a three round burst might make up for that if the accuracy isn't skewed too much on the burst. And finally for the weapons we have the exotic sword called Heart Shadow. This is quite interesting because it's the weirdest blade I've seen in the game so far. It's curved, but it's exotic perk is even weirder, so exclamation. Heavy attacks made with the full sword energy turn you invisible and fire exploding void projectiles. So from what I've seen and read about this, it is basically like the Warlock Snap, but a void version that causes void explosions. So it's a very interesting sword. Obviously it has to drop from the dungeon. There are different triumphs you can complete to increase the drop chance, but that will be the only way that you can get it. Coincidentally, you can also only get the catalyst inside the dungeon as well. There are different things that you need to do, but again, I won't be going over it in depth in this video. That's some crazy chance if you're curious, there is a total of 51 triumphs in Season of the Haunted, and I will openly admit that some of these are quite hefty, so by all means, get ready to get your grind on. But I believe I've covered everything. If I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments down below. There is a fair bit in the season and it's nice to see Bungie stepping up their game. So if you're just returning to Destiny, I would recommend jumping into the new season. It is definitely a doozy and one that you don't want to miss. But if you did like this style of video, please leave a like on the video and let me know in the comments below and I'll make more of these going forward. And also, please let me know if you would like a dungeon how-to guide, a no-nonsense guide specifically, because people take the piss when they explain things but that is everything from me thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video